Hey, it's Josiah and Jedi from Sing His Songs Music Production. We were just getting ready to... <laughs> hey, it's Josiah and Jedi from Sing His Songs Music Production. We were just getting set up to record some drums tomorrow. Um, we wanted to show you what we've been doing this year, recording drums. We've been doing a couple things different lately. So, yeah, let's come over to the K and I'll show you. This is Jedi. Hello. <laughs> um, so, to me, the most important part of the drum set, well, there's a lot of important things, but my favorite thing to get really nice sounding is the overheads. And this year we've been experimenting with using this ORTF configuration. We haven't been following it exactly scientifically or anything, but the idea is you have the two microphones spread a little more than 90 degrees apart, and I think, I think it's supposed to be 110. Um, but we've just set it up like this, and it sounds great. Um, the cymbals are nice and wide, but they still have a lot of meat to them. And it's just, it, I feel like it's really balanced. Um, the important thing here is to make sure that each of these microphones is the same distance from the snare drum. So we just do that by, I just have him hold a cable to the center of the snare drum head and then measure up, make sure they're both the same. That'll put the snare right in the middle and eliminate any phase issues you might have with the snare drum. Um, for direct drum mics, we've been using the SM7B, the Shure SM7B on the snare drum when we can. It sounds really great. Um, I feel like it's really balanced um, and it doesn't have some of the sharpness that I get with the cheaper mics. Um, it's very round and balanced. It has a lot of low end, but also it picks up the high stuff. So if you, for only having one snare drum mic, it, it does really well. The only thing about it is it's so huge that it's kind of awkward to get underneath this hi-hat. And on some days, I just can't fit it. Um, and then I just put an SM58 on the snare. Um, it's just kind of awkward trying to get it in here and then I sometimes bang the hi-hat or bang the snare drum. And also I can't get the mic very high. That's about as high as it's gonna get. So it works really well when I can get it to work. Um, but otherwise I just use a 58 and then I put that um, on the floor tom. Put the SM7 on the floor tom. For the rack tom, we have a Shure SM48 which is pointed directly at the center of the head. Floor tom, we have the 58 pointed at the center of the head again. Um, yeah, and that's what we've been doing for direct mics. For kick drum, for kick drum, we've been using the Shure PGA 52, and it sounds pretty good. Just pointed directly at the center of the drum head. Well, I should adjust it. It's kind of crooked. <laughs> um, about five inches away. And the big thing we've been doing different with our kick drum sound is taking off the front head, the resonant head. You want to tell them why? Yeah. So when we take off the front head, it gives um, our kick drum sound more air, uh, more woof. It's a little bit more balanced than what we got before when we kept the resonant head on and then mic'd uh, the batter head. So we get a little bit less attack and punch from the, um, from the kick, but it's a more balanced sound and we really like it like that. Yeah, it's very warm. I, I feel like it's very warm and it sounds to me what I would want out of a kick drum mic setup with two mics where you have both heads mic'd. I feel like that's what I would want to get. It's very balanced and nice, uh, almost vintage, right? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, it's been sounding really good, especially for our style of sound. We still have the resonant head on the floor over there, and we sometimes use it, but this has been working out for us most of the time. It's really nice. Yeah. Um, and then, last mic setup is this rim mic. I have it set to omnidirectional. It's a large diaphragm condenser. Uh, it's the AKG P420. And I have this set up right about ear level, ear level <laughs> with um, my height, and but I have it angled down, kind of pointing right in between the kick drum and snare drum, like right, right around in here. And I think it gets the air out of the kick drum. It picks that up really nice, but it picks up the snare, all the drums really nicely, and of course the cymbals too. 
It's just a good room mic that we've been using. We tried a couple different positions and that seemed to work best. Um, and that's the farthest away from the kit we can get it in this room. So it turned out good. A um, couple things we've learned about drum recording over the years. Uh, first thing, just what everybody always told us when we started is tuning really matters. Um, and we kind of always knew that, but we've been discovering more and more about that lately. Um, yeah, getting them to sound really good just in the room with the tuning is super important to getting a good drum sound. Uh, do you want to tell them how you tune and some of the mistakes we've made with tuning? Yeah. So, in the room, when you tune the drums pretty low, they sound really good. They sound really powerful, and that's the sound we're normally going for. But once you put mics on all of the drums, and then put those drums into a song, um, they really get lost in the mix a lot of the time because they don't have the attack. Yeah, they don't have need. the brightness. Yeah. And so, for the snare last year, we definitely found that out because it's really hard to EQ the snare drum to cut through in the mix. It was really getting lost um, because we had it tuned so low. But um, we found that if we just tune it about three quarters of a turn on each of the lugs, um, that still gives us a pretty deep and meaty sound, but it still cuts through in the mix because it has enough attack. And uh, for the toms, um, we like them tuned low too, but we've had to tune them up a little bit so that they can cut through. So for each of the toms, I tune the batter heads about, yeah, three quarters of a turn too. And that gives us a pretty, a pretty good sound. It's not as low and deep as I would like in the room, but under mics, it really, really um, sounds good. Yeah, under mics and in a mix especially. Yeah. Um, once you add in all the other instruments, you really need the drums to cut through above, especially if you have a lot of guitars and you know the bass, keyboards, all that mid-range stuff. You need the drums to cut through above all that. And if you have too much low end energy, it can really mess with just things in the mix. So it can be tempting in the room to tune them as powerful as you want them to sound in the end. But um, we found that we can find a compromise of tuning them up just a little bit more and they'll cut through really nice and then we can make them sound huge in the mix. Same with the kick drum really. Um, and he said he was, he's even been tuning the kick drum higher than ever before with only one head on it. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because uh, with only one head on it, since it's already more woofy with only that resonant head on, I really need to tune up the batter head a little with bit. With only the batter head on. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> right, when only the batter head is on, it's really woofy. And so I have to tune it up a little bit just so that um, it'll still be able to cut through. Yeah. But it's, it's still really warm. And yeah, and we like the coated heads for all the draw. Uh, well, these, whatever, upright drums. Yeah, the <laughs> and then. Toms and the snare, we have coated heads. Yeah, and, and then the clear head on the kick. Right. For the snare, we really like a two ply head because um, it cuts out some of those overtones that we don't really like in a snare drum. But for the toms, I like single ply heads because they just have more um, resonance than a double ply head will have. And then we just put a little bit of moon gel on each of these drums just to take away a little bit of those overtones. Yeah, and the coated heads generally sound a little warmer, um, but for the kick drum, we wanted more punch especially with only having the one head on there. So the clear head is the what we've been using. And we have the clear heads for the toms too, and we sometimes put those on um, when we want a little clearer of a sound. It's funny, they, they sound clearer and they are clear heads. Mm -hmm. But always coated on the snare. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen anybody use a clear head on a snare anyways. <laughs> okay, and then all these mics are just running into the Focusrite Scarlett 18i20 and just going straight into Studio One and they sound pretty good. Um, yeah, here's a sample of Jedi playing.
thanks for watching. Um, hopefully you found this interesting, maybe helpful, maybe you got some ideas um, just from seeing what we like to do. It's definitely not the only way, but it's what we've been doing, using what we have, um, and it works out really nice. I think it sounds really good. Um, yeah, hopefully soon I'm going to be posting a video about how I mix the drums in this video and kind of take that apart for you. So yeah, hopefully that'll be coming out soon. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.